Hello friends, welcome back. In today's video, I will be sharing with you the process of creating lake pigments from the goldenrod flowers. This is in fact a chapter which I have taken from my recently launched online course called Botanical Lake Pigments, the details of which you can find in the description box below. Goldenrod flowers are amazingly versatile wildflowers that can be found growing along the roadside moist places, forests all across the globe during late summer and early autumn. They are the most important late pollinators and a great source of a natural dye. In this lesson, we will make a yellow pigment from the golden rod plant. Because my cooking vessel has a limited capacity, I am separating the leaves and blooms from the stem so that I can utilize them all for the process of making lake pigment. It's not really necessary for you to do this. You could use the entire plant matter by itself. But as mentioned earlier, given the capacity of my pot, I had to do this way. So after you have finished um, separating the flowers and leaves from the, the stem, I submerge the plant matter in boiling water and allow it for 15 to 20 minutes of steeping time. Now using a wooden dowel, I gently pound the flowers and leaves to help them release the pigment. So after pounding briefly, I bring the pot into the kitchen to gently cook the plant matter. In our kitchen, we have an electric hot plate for cooking and this is how I go about it. Because I don't want to waste resources, I turn on the hot plate at high heat for about five to 10 minutes before turn it in, turning it off. Now the plate remains hot for an extended period of time and I let it do its thing. So an important thing to remember is don't boil the solution if you are experimenting with a plant matter that you have never worked with before, since it might degrade the pigment particles, which we don't want to happen. So you must remain really patient during this process as it is a very slow process. And I constantly stir my dye extract so as also to provide a larger surface area for the dye extraction to take place and also to prevent the risk of burning the plant matter. After cooking, I let it sit overnight and as you can see, the froth that you observe here is due to the fermentation process. So I believe that this will influence the color that I obtain after the laking process. So, you know, making lake pigments is a grand adventure with a gloriously unpredictable result because there are several factors that influence the final color that you obtain. So now the next stage is to separate the, the plant matter from the dye extract. So I'm just going to use my hands to do this process, but you could use a muslin cloth to do the same. Now, since I couldn't find any clean muslin cloth at this time, I just went about like this. It's a very crude way of working, but I don't mind. <laughs> anyway, so I'm just going to um, squeeze all that rich dye uh, juice from this uh, plant as much as I can. And then I'll um, use a tea strainer which can still catch all that fine and smaller particles um, from the, the extract. I'm also going to take all the remaining bits and squeeze all the juice from there as well. So there you have it. You have the clear dye, which has a really olive green color. But as you, as you see, it is very turbid, indicating the presence of all that um, organic particulate matter. So it's really uh, essential to first remove it before you proceed any further. Because the presence of particulate matter will affect the pigment's quality, I'm going to transfer the dye extract to the pot and give the bottle a thorough rinse. And then I'm going to use coffee filters to separate the organic particulate matter from the dye. Now, whenever I'm using coffee filter, I usually use two layers of coffee filter just so I don't risk um, the, the coffee filter tearing from the bottom, which happens quite often with me. <laughs> 
because it's, a, it's not a really high quality coffee filter, but it does its job. It has fine enough pour to kind of catch all that um, particulate matter present within the extract. Now, as you can observe that the clear filtrate is um, coming out through the coffee filter. So I let it do its thing um, because it is going to take a while uh, for all that filtrate to pass through the filter paper. Now, as you can observe here, because the part particulate matter is really fine, it's kind of really a very slow uh, filtration process. So this is almost after an hour later. So yeah, this, this, is, this really, really impedes the pace of your work. But that's the whole part of it. It's, it's just about <laughs> enjoying the process. Prior to beginning the leaking stage, I just warmed the solution slightly to aid the chemical reaction to take place more efficiently. On second thoughts, I decided to filter the solution once again, this time using a muslin cloth, since I was dissatisfied with the dye solution's clarity. Now that our dye extract is prepared for leaking, it is time to begin the actual leaking procedure. So I've already prepared solutions of alum and sodium carbonate at a concentration of 10% each, and both solutions are fairly warm to work with. So I'm going to first add um, 40 ml of potassium aluminum sulfate and both the solutions are fairly warm. So make sure that you're working with hot, warm to hot solutions. And of course, please make sure that you take good precautions not to burn yourself uh, when doing this process. So as soon as, as soon as I add alum, you can see there's a dramatic shift in the color of the dye extract. Now I'm going to take 20 ml of sodium carbonate um, and then going to add into the solution and immediately there is an effervescence. Now using my wooden dowel I'm stirring the, the liquid and I'm also dispersing the froth at the same time. It is best to do this process slowly to avoid creating a mess around you. So as you can see there is a cloudiness and that's the pigment, the lake pigment, pigment being formed. So it takes a while a few hours to overnight for the entire pigment to fall down to the bottom of the the bottle and then the the liquid above um, gets a it's, it's cleared off from all the pigment particles so I haven't really included the stage where I wash the pigments to so as to remove any excess alkali that might be present because that you have already seen in the lesson before so I proceeded with that before I um, opened the filter paper to um, flatten out and spread the pigment a bit so that it helps in drying the pigment relatively sooner. And so, so it took about four full days for the pigments to dry, bone dry rather completely. So the next stage is to scrape off all that pigment onto a butter paper and then grind it into a fine powder. So if you look at it, the pigment looks really different when you just um, uh, scrape it off from the filter paper. Now as I begin to grind the pigment, you will see how the color changes. So. It's, in, it's turned into a beautiful um, golden yellow color. After the first grinding, I normally pass my pigment through a fine mesh screen to ensure that any coarse pigment particles remaining may also be ground finely. Once prepared, put the pigment in an airtight container to preserve its extended shelf life. And this is how a lovely organic yellow color can be extracted from the humble golden rod.